Hey, it's Bria. Welcome to this episode of the In Not Of podcast, which is basically just a space where I invite you to think aloud with me on what it means to be surrounded by something but not defined by it. In this episode, I wanted to delve into the concept of interdependence and being able to shout out your village. We are surrounded by a culture of individualism, especially in America. Um, And I think it requires us to be bought into a sort of stigma around asking for help, needing help, providing help. Um, It's, you know, very everyone for themselves. Um, And in this episode, I just want to invite you to kind of challenge the, um, the preconceived notions that we have about interdependence and community. I invite you to just spend a little time with me here taking the self-made myth and the idol of the self-made myth off of its pedestal and just challenge our cultural obsession with being extremely independent. One thought that I do want to get out is that I do think it's okay to celebrate people who are really hustling, doing it for themselves, providing for their families, like really doing a lot with not a lot of support. Um, I'm a words of affirmation girl. And so when I'm taking on a lot, I want to be shouted out. I want to be seen and I want to be recognized. And like, I do like kind of want some credit for what I'm able to accomplish, Um, especially when I'm doing it with less support than others might be, or, you know, being underrepresented and like, pushing through like imposter syndrome and doing it without like role models like that, I think is valuable to be like seen and like acknowledged for the things that you're doing, even when it's hard and even when it's harder than it is for others. Um, So I don't think that that's necessarily like this like bad thing, but I do think that we have to be careful about this sort of like glorification that I often see us apply to um, just like doing something on your own with on your own in air quotes. Um, I think it becomes dangerous when it becomes this sort of expectation rather than an accomplishment that you can like acknowledge and reflect on. Um, Like, think about how many rap songs you hear with, like, the line, like, oh, I did this all by myself. I came up out the mud with no help. And, like, I think sometimes it can feel like this sort of, like, mandatory state of, like, you can't ask for help. Or, like, it doesn't count if you got help. And, like, that's that's not really, like, helpful to us either, you know? Because, like, I didn't come out the mud with no help. I had a lot of help in different ways than it might have looked for like my white counterparts or people who grew up with intergenerational wealth. Like I didn't have maybe necessarily the exact same kinds of help that other people had, but I didn't do it. I didn't get where I am by myself by any means. So like, I do also think that that's to some extent a little bit of like, white supremacy, American capitalism, rugged individualism, just kind of like bleeding into how we see ourselves and how we see our value. And that I don't, I don't want that either. You know, I don't want it to be this kind of thing where I don't want it to be like, if you have help, you don't count like, or like we're sitting around like weighing one person's version of help versus another, you know? Like, I think American individualism requires us to buy into the self-made myth. And whenever we see ourselves coming back to this like self-made myth and like making it sort of, sort of like an idol that we're putting like way too much value in, sort of like worshiping at the foot of the like self-made idol, that is something for us to like, step back and reflect on. Um, I happen to be a spiritual person. You may not, but like me, something that I try to remind myself all the time, even when I feel like 
I 100% did something by myself is uh, not really, because I do believe that like, I have been blessed um, in my case by God, in your case by whoever you believe, or maybe nothing at all. But for me, that is valuable for me to step back and reflect on. Um, so I do think that there's, there just has to be a balance to it all, you know? I also think that we can't really, we shouldn't really tie our identity to the temporary state that we're in, in terms of receiving help or giving help or um, not needing help or needing a lot of help. Um, and for me, something that I've been reflecting on is the um, the seasons of life where I've needed a ton of support um, for just basic things and the seasons of life where I've needed to do things on my own that I maybe didn't want to do on my own or like had been used to always receiving help with. I think that there's value in in the moments where you're in that season of quote unquote doing it all, like there's value in receiving your flowers and receiving your um, like praise for what you've been able to accomplish while recognizing that you are in this temporary state for better or for worse, a temporary season of life that's not gonna last forever. At some point, you are going to need help or you're going to want help or you're going to explicitly ask for help. And that's not a change in your identity. That's not like this like shift in who you are. That's you being fundamentally you, moving through different seasons of life that require different things of yourself and different things of others. Um, and I say for better or for worse, because different seasons of life come with things that you like and things that you don't like, like maybe the pro of recognizing that you won't always be in this state where you feel like you're like doing things by yourself is like, if you don't like that, if you don't like the feeling of being like, I want help with this thing and no one is available to give me help with this thing, that's a good thing, right? You don't want to be stuck in that state of feeling like you can't ask for help or feeling like the people that you would ask for help are not, don't have the capacity to help you at that moment. Um, it's just a season and it won't last forever. But maybe the con of that, especially if you're the kind of person who really likes the feeling of being independent, is knowing that eventually you are going to come out of this state and you're going to have to get back to asking for help. And that might be really uncomfortable for you if you are a person who's not used to that. Um, or you might have this like feeling of anxiety or um, of, yeah, I guess of like anxiety of feeling like you're used to not asking for help. And is this a change in your identity? Um, and also like, there's just the general cons of like relying on other people for things can be really scary. Um, the state of not being in control. And this is something that I struggle with a lot um, and is probably going to come up over and over again, like in episodes that I'm recording for this podcast, I guess, is the state of not being able to control things it can be genuinely terrifying for people with personality types similar to mine um, or just anyone really. Like there's a comfort that comes from the illusion that you can control things. And something as simple as like asking for help taking out the trash, now you're no longer in control of the exact moment that the trash goes out. Um, and like whether they tie the bag perfectly the way that you would have tied the bag, um, you're really actually not even in control of whether it gets done or not. They could forget. And that's scary. Like, I mean, maybe not to a normal person, but to me, it's like, oh my gosh, what if everything goes wrong because I didn't do this myself? Um, and so I think recognizing that you are not actually in control of the flow of like everything with life, um, including you cannot like will yourself into being in a permanent state of individualism or a permanent state of having 
a vast village to rely on, you know, like you can't, you can't guarantee that the people that you rely on will be around for you forever, for like, whatever reason. Um, but you also can't, when we know this, just by the nature of human life, you can't guarantee that you will be independent forever. Like we all get older, we all, uh, God willing, we all get older, and eventually we need help with something. And just like when we were babies, we could not do all of this on our own. We were not paying the mortgage when we were three months old and we were not like cooking our own dinner. It's just the the flow of life and something that's hard to accept, but we have to kind of chip away at it. I also think it's valuable to think beyond, you know, just the metaphor of seasons of independence versus interdependence because it won't always be a whole season. Um, Sometimes it'll be a moment uh, or a brief instance. The same person who ran a department-wide meeting at 9 a.m. might freak out seeing a spider and need some help at 11.30 a.m. The same person who manages their budget and savings and investments might need a ride to the store an hour later. I think we can, you know, decouple this idea of like, needing help from being this like very permanent state, not just in terms of like, who am I as a person? Like, am I the kind of person who needs help or doesn't, but really just like in any given moment, what do I need? What can I give? What do I need to receive? We can get attached to kind of this fixed mindset and like eventually set ourselves up put ourselves kind of in these traps where we're like, oh, well, I'm just a needy person or I'm, I'm just so independent. Like that's, that's not me. I'm not the kind of person who's going around asking for help. And maybe that's true for you in that particular moment. But when you're tying it to your identity, then every time that you are not meeting this image of yourself that you have in your head, you're not only running up against the difficulty of what you need to do, but you're also running up against the difficulty of feeling like you are not who you said you were. And sometimes that's holding you back. Like if you just have this mindset of like, well, I just need a lot of help. I need a lot of support. I don't like to be by myself. I don't like to do things by myself when you have this moment where there's something that you can do by yourself, you're really quick to be like, but that's just not me. Like I, I don't put air in the tire by myself. That's just not me. Or like, I don't go to the grocery store by myself and like, okay, fair in the moment. You aren't used to going to the grocery store by yourself. You are not used to putting air in a tire by yourself. But like, if somebody were to like, look at like the building blocks of who you are if you were to look at the building blocks of who you are is that really like the conclusion that you would come to would that be like a substantial like ingredient that goes into what makes bria bria or into what makes you you would they be looking there at like this piece of the recipe of you and it says like oh yeah she doesn't go to the grocery store by herself it's just not a thing she does i don't think so I think that like the essence of who you are is a lot more complicated than that. And maybe you don't like going to the grocery store by yourself, but if you tell yourself like, well, I'm just, this is the kind of person I am. You're really like setting yourself up to base your identity on that. And you're also boxing in what you can do. And the same, same thing goes for the other side of the coin. If you're the type of person who tells yourself, I'm independent, I don't ask anyone for any money, um, and there's an emergency, and you need $500, and you just don't have it. And now you're like considering a payday loan or like, you know, trying to find some way to get $500 in a way that's not going to be great for you long term, because you're so attached to the idea that like, even if I know that there's somebody who could help me out in a more, a less predatory way, I'm not going to ask because I am the type of person who does not ask. You know, you're kind of boxing in 
the solutions that you're allowing yourself to explore based on the story that you have told yourself or told others about who you are. And in either of these cases, maybe you don't, maybe you don't do the thing. That's okay. Like maybe you really didn't want to go to the grocery store by yourself and you don't go to the grocery store by yourself. You ask somebody to come with you. Okay. Maybe you find some way of getting $500 that doesn't involve like being like, Hey dad, can you lend me $500? Because you're just whatever will not allow you to ask. Fine. But recognizing that it's not like it would make you a different person. It's not like it would change like the composition of who you are. If you did say like, you know what, I'm anxious about going grocery shopping by myself and I'm going to do it anyway. Or I feel really guilty about like asking for money, but like I have this emergency and I really need to address this problem. So I'm going to go and at least ask if someone can lend me the money, like that kind of thing. Knowing that that wouldn't be just this like big turning point in which you have this like downfall or like change in your character arc because you needed to do something that was scary or uncomfortable or just not, not your usual path that you would have taken. So the actual the actual reason this was on my mind is because like I saw something um, about like a lot of the time people aren't really bawling. They just don't have real bills to pay. And that, that definitely hit for me because I think especially like the culture that I am immersed in, in the Bay area and probably also in LA, maybe it's a California thing. Maybe it's a coastal thing. I don't know, but like, there's a lot, a ton of like flexing a ton of like showing off what you have, but there's also a real like um, caginess about like how you got what you have and what circumstances allowed you to get what you have. Like there's, it's very common to like flex what you have. Um, I'll just give like a very Bay Area example, like drive a very nice car and live with your mom because rent is expensive and rent is crazy expensive. And so you can have this nice thing. That's your thing that you can control. Um, because the alternative of like, if I were to try and go out and do this on my own, I don't know that I can make it, or maybe I like have done the math and I actually know that I could not make it. And so that feels like a very Bay area, LA coastal thing. Um, and it was on my mind because I was thinking about like how if you are able to get all these nice things, like good on you, but if you're able to get all these nice things while having to support yourself, kind of like even more good on you. And I was trying to unpack like, why do I feel that way? Um, so that's what brought me to like the idea that like I do want to shout out and recognize people who are doing a lot. Um, on their own. But it brought me back to this topic that I've been wanting to talk about for a long time, which is just the topic of like, shouting out your village, showing and telling your village. Because that's not the common, that's not the common practice, you know, it's like, whenever we want to flex, or whenever we feel the urge to flex, there's a very like, um, prescriptive way to go about it, I guess. Like, it's almost formulaic. You can't be too, um, you can't be too obvious about it because that's considered tacky. Um, you have to be kind of subtle about it. You can't brag too much, but you have to brag a little. And you also, are not supposed to like reveal like the things that went into you being able to flex. Like you're not supposed to like talk about like, I had to save for 13 months to afford this. You're not supposed to talk about my parents helped me out with like the down payment for this car or whatever. And that's why I'm able to drive this nice car right now. You're not supposed to talk about like, I moved in with my sister or with my mom and dad so that I could save up money 
so that I could get this nice thing. Like all of that is supposed to be like hidden beneath the surface. And maybe you tell like your best friend or your brother or whatever, but to the rest of the world, to Instagram, the image that you're projecting is like, I just have this nice thing, no biggie, kind of a humble brag. Um, and it goes back into this like self-made myth that I feel like is kind of, again, like a formulaic requirement of like pro projecting yourself as successful within American capitalism and American individualism in order to like communicate that you are like a successful member of society you're kind of asked or told to hide all of the ways that other people lift you up and allow you to get to this like idealized state and so it's a topic that i started outlining a couple of weeks ago but like in order to challenge the idea that we're all supposed to do all of this on our own that I'm supposed to do everything on my own and so is everyone else. I want to challenge myself and challenge others to make their village visible. So I mentioned shouting out your village and making your village visible. And so like, what does that look like in practice? Realistically, like I know you are not going to, I am not going to caption all my Instagram stories with like, oh, disclaimer, my mom bought me this meal or like, disclaimer, I've been living rent free with my dad. Like people aren't going to do that. Like we're not going to be cut and dry and formulaic about it. Um, and honestly, sometimes it's not for Instagram or Facebook to know. We don't necessarily owe any individual coworkers, cousin twice removed some explanation of like how we got where we are in life. But it's not outrageous, I don't think, to tag your parents like in a post where you're like saying, oh, we got our first house and just say, thank you for all the financial advice and support. You know, it's not egregious to like tag your sister in your post when you're like graduating with your master's degree and say like, thank you so much for being a shoulder to cry on, helping me with childcare and staying up late with me to study. You know, these aren't these like radical acts of like extreme transparency. You're not like revealing other people's like financial information like oh my dad spent like seven thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars on my education this semester alone he took money out of his retirement blah 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 like you're not doing that you're just in public acknowledging that you got help and when you do that you're making it okay for other people to get help and to feel okay about not having like moved mountains all by themselves. You're making it less taboo to talk about your village. And even if it's just within your little circle of friends or your peers or the people that bother to actually read your Instagram captions, I think it's a step towards normalizing a more community, community. I think it's a step towards normalizing a more community oriented approach to getting through this messed up system and this messy life, this complicated world that we live in. It's a way of taking that kind of like self-made idol off of its pedestal for a moment and asking yourself and the people around you to at least question that idea for a moment so that this obsession with being self-made and extremely like independent and all of that slowly loses the chokehold that it has on us as a culture. Something that I think can also make this feel a little bit more awkward than we would like it to is for those of us who have been taught, you know, not to brag um, for whatever reason, it can feel almost like you're bragging about having a village at all to people who don't have that. And I think that can also like kind of get in the way of people just like acknowledging openly and being like grateful openly for what others have done for them. Um, I noticed this in myself actually very recently, like a kind of a manifestation of like my own privilege, I guess I would say is like, um, the topic of college came up with someone I consider very close to me. Um, 
and we were just talking about like how like our future kids would pay for college and they were asking if I would pay for college and like it didn't even occur to me that anybody would say no like I it took me a very long time in my conversation with this person to even like really fully comprehend the idea of not paying for your kids college through some sort of means whether through like I don't know savings or taking out a like a parent loan alongside their student loan like I just like it was definitely my privilege showing I was having a very hard time with the conversation and I think I said something like I didn't know people like unless they like didn't have parents or were in foster care like I didn't know that like people like didn't pay for their kids college which like hindsight now I'm like well duh that's like it's a thing um and I think I think I was wrestling with like uh I guess the the cognitive dissonance of like feeling a lot of gratitude that I didn't have to and like to be clear like I'm not one of those like kids that just had like oh here's your college fund like just go spend it or whatever like everybody took out loans but like um I think I was dealing with a lot of cognitive dissonance of recognizing that something had been done for me that helped me a lot, helped my student loan debt be, you know, an amount that I could actually pay back and that I'm done paying back now. Like, um, while also acknowledging that, like, this means that I had a leg up over other people and like no, now does that make me a bad person or whatever um and like are people who, whose parents help them with college like just this like kind of people that's like oh you didn't work as hard as people who put themselves through school and like i mean kudos to people who put themselves through school because i don't know like what that's like at all um like even after having the conversation, it's hard for me to picture, like, how would I have gone about, like, on day one of semester one, like, whatever, $13,000 is due, and it just has to come out of my bank account? There's no way. But I guess, you know, people are figuring out ways. Um, and shout out to them. And I think the part of that conversation that was difficult for me was being able to acknowledge that I had a village that helped me do that while still holding like the accomplishment of getting through school, holding like some satisfaction in myself and some sense of like accomplishment, um, especially because I can get so caught up on, you know, looking at things that other people have that I don't have and then being like, oh, well, they had this or they had that. Somebody helped them with X, Y, and Z. Because the cognitive dissonance of trying to figure out why do they have a thing that I don't have if I'm just as good a person of them um, is a struggle to hold in my head. And it takes a lot of emotional maturity that I'm still cultivating. And so being able to look at that and not just like come to the black and white conclusion of like people who do it this way they're hard workers people who do it the other way uh well good for them must be nice you know like there has to be some sort of balance and i think that's something that i am still learning because it goes back to me thinking of people in categories people who put themselves through school, people whose parents help them get through school. Like the idea that you forever stay like branded as one or the other, like that you're always going to be the guy whose dad had enough money and savings for him to not take out a loan for college. And that just carries with you throughout your entire life. It is a benefit that like 
from the day you graduate without loans, maybe honestly before that, like just not having the stress of money while you're in college. Like that's something that does have this ripple effect on your life. But it doesn't mean like, oh, well, this guy, he doesn't deserve the job that he got because somewhere somebody else put themselves through college, you know? Um, and I get so latched on to that kind of like black and white thinking of just trying to figure out like the formula or the system for like, who is the most deserving of nice things and is a trap. I get stuck in it. I don't move forward. I don't try to figure out what nice things I actually want for myself. This episode is definitely going to be imperfect, but I guess I just want to leave you with the idea or conviction or like nugget of an idea that maybe you can cultivate for yourself um, that the help that you get from others is not this like defining trait of who you are and the help that you don't get from others is not this defining trait of who you are. It's one part of your story. Um, I want to leave you with a couple of not necessarily affirmations because they're too long to be affirmations. I, I'm wordy, but, um, things to muse on. So the first one is I am in a moment of independence. I am doing a lot on my own right now, but I am not required to make self-sufficiency my entire identity. So that might be useful for you if you are really like reliant on yourself right now. Um, and another one is, I am in a moment of interdependence. I rely on others a lot right now, but I do not have to make this season my identity. And one that I think applies to you no matter who you are, where you are in your life is, I am more than my current circumstances. If you feel so inclined to explore this topic a little deeper, I have some exercises that I found useful. Um, I might like try to make these into some sort of like worksheet. I really don't know. I'm also still working on my like Figma skills. Um, I am a writer first, I think, when it comes to expressing myself. Um, so just full transparency, I'm, I'm figuring this out as I go. Um, but the first exercise is sort of um, like a reflection on your life as a whole. Um, so the first question is, what is an accomplishment of mine that I consider significant? As I go through this, I'll give you guys my examples that I wrote down um, because maybe that'll be helpful for you in filling this out if you choose to do it. Um, so I wrote down graduating from UC Berkeley. The next question is, what are three things that I did to accomplish this that required my own initiative? So basically things you did on your own. Um, I wrote down coming up with a plan to leave fashion school, get enough transfer credits, enroll in summer courses and spring courses in three different colleges at a time to make sure that I had enough credits to transfer in the timeline that I wanted to UC Berkeley. Um, the second thing is doing the reading, the studying, the assignments, the test preps as a transfer student who came from a very different environment. Um, I definitely, Community college is already stigmatized. I feel like I went to an extra stigmatized one. I had all these ideas in my head about who I was gonna be um, and I had to push through it and really like immerse myself in a very different environment. And the third thing I wrote down is writing my application essays, filling out my applications, putting my absolute best foot forward to um, apply to UC Berkeley when I was scared to do it. Okay, and then the last question for this exercise is write out three things that others did that enabled you to accomplish this. These could be roadblocks they removed, things they provided, or anything else that contributed to your success that you didn't do on your own.
this one was easier for me to write down. Um, just going back to like my reflection on um, college and how much help I got. So obviously the first thing, my parents took out loans to pay for my education. I wrote this down with three exclamation points. This was a huge deal. I don't know if any of you were on Tumblr in like 2015 and happened to see this like semi-viral post that was in the style of like Drake's um, album cover for if you're reading this too, it's too late. Um, but I made my graduation cap say, if you're reading this, I'm in debt. I am no longer in debt. And most of the reason for that is because I didn't take out loans all by myself. My parents also took out loans. That is huge. Um, the next one is my parents provided me with a place to stay and rides to and from school when I couldn't find housing near campus. So not only did I move back in with my parents um, while I was attending UC Berkeley, I think it was like my third to last semester, but I did not have a car and I had huge anxiety about driving. So my dad would take me with him on his morning commute to work and just drop me off in Berkeley and continue on his way. And that's how I was able to get through, I think it was like my fall, my like last fall semester, the entire semester, just like bumming a ride with my dad and sleeping on a bunk bed in my little sister's room. Um, and then the last one, my uncle bought me the laptop I used throughout college. That's a big deal. Laptops are expensive. <laughs> Okay, so that is exercise number one um, with my examples if they inspire you to do the exercise yourself. The next exercise that I will give you, and this one I think I think you all can do because it's very quick, um, but this one is more of like a super fast prompt. So exercise number two is uh, two parts, but very quick. In the past 24 hours, what is one way that you have shown up for yourself? And the second question is, in the past 24 hours, what is one way that you have benefited from the practice of collective responsibility, which is just a fancy way of being like, somebody outside of myself helped me out, did me a solid. Um, so my answers, shown up for myself, I requested time off to recharge, even though I felt anxious about it. Small thing, quick thing, but I did it. Um, and for the second question that I've benefited from collective responsibility, um, my little sister shared her sunscreen with me when I forgot to apply it. Um, Cause black girls need to wear sunscreen too. And good sunscreen that doesn't leave this like cast on our face is expensive. I know that, um, but she shared it with me and it kept me from getting burnt when we were out in the sun all day. Not all day, but we were out in this. It felt like all day because it was really hot. <laughs> That's all I really have for you for this episode. I want to leave you with the permission to shout out your village and the desire to shout out your village. Shout out your village if it's your mom who's letting you borrow her car. Shout out your village if it's your siblings. Shout out your village if your village, if you believe that your village is literally just you and God, make that visible.